When you start a wizard on the Agnar server, you're going to be in an unfamiliar place called Eriudin. The thing about this place, it's really nice, but it's kind of confusing to get around. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and fast forwarded to the point where you have finished turning in your, your note and got your nice beautiful robe here and you've come downstairs. That's easy enough. You can handle that no problem. Now you got to know which teleporter to go to and you can sit down here and spend 15 minutes fumbling around. What you want to do first is you want to go ahead and go through this teleportal. This is a portal pad right here. You go through that and it'll teleport you to a totally different part. And that'll, after you go through that, it'll get you to the newbie area. So here we go. And off we go. So a couple words on the wizard. The wizard is one of those characters that does massive damage. But it does have its drawbacks. And those drawbacks are it doesn't have a pet. Sometimes it could be a little underpowered compared to the enemies it's fighting. And uh, that's basically all it's really got. It's a tough character. But if you like dealing massive damage, this character's for you. You basically sit back in a group, wait till the enemy is down, getting low, and you zap him. You hit him hard. If you've seen on my live stream, I have a uh, Erudite Wizard level 5152. And at that level, he can dish out some crazy damage. Of course, this is on the live server where we do critical hits and all that. Classic days, that didn't come around to much later. So if you're thinking about starting a, a wizard in the classic on uh, Agnar, you might want to think about it twice because critical hits didn't come along till much later. So anyhow, here we go. We're going to go out to Toxula Forest. We're going to go blow some kobolds away, and you're going to see just how massive the damage it is. There are no other characters that can just whack things, blast them in two shots. Problem being, your mana regen is going to be an issue. It's going to be, you're going to have some serious downtime. But I got to say, there's one good thing about this character: you can play him while you're at work. That's right. Turn the sound down. I've done it before. I know you all have too. Turn the sound down. Go AFK. Find a spot, and just kill a few. Back up to the guards. You'll get back up to the safe spot. Regen your mana. Kill a few. It's the only character you can do that where you can just. Do it and you don't have to babysit them. Contrast that to an enchanter where you got to babysit them. Otherwise, they're dead before you know it. Now, here we go. We got Lucky. We got a cloth cap. And look at that. That guy was yellow. Two shots and he's gone. So right there, you can see we have with our mana about two shots you can use. So per whole bar of mana, that's about four shots, two enemies. It's a little bit slow and inefficient, but I do like how you can just blast things like this. And, and to tell you the truth, my level 51... It's actually quite a bit of fun to play. If you have the right supporting cast with him, it's fun. Look at that. Down for the count. Now there goes our mana right there. Later on you will get more mana. And if you team up with a, uh, an enchanter, they will cast clarity on you, which will improve your mana regen. But until then, you just want to stay out here, get these guys, come back to the guards when you're ready and rest up. You can safely stay over here like so just just work this area right here if the zone is crowded go pick zone slash pick zone so you get a less crowded one you have more kobolds to kill you don't want to get too far away from the guards because you can get jumped and if you get jumped you're going to die out there and then you're going to have to go you'll respawn where your guild masters you got to run through that whole ho hog and get all the way back here okay next we're going to talk a little bit about spells so once you get level three, you, you want to just buy one spell, Root. This is what you want, because you're going to employ a technique later called Root and Nuke. And you also want to get Lesser Shielding, which is at six, but just get those two. Root and Nuke means you start off the battle with Root, so they can't move, and if it sticks, then you can Nuke them. And you want to do that to get some Nukes off him, or you Nuke him, and if he comes at you, you Root him and run. Anyway, this is where he is. So finally, the other spells you want to buy at level 3 are you want to get these Shock of Fire, Fire Bolt, Lesser Shielding, Ice Strike, and Shock of Ice. Now I did buy Okil's Radiation, but I do not advise you to buy it because it only lasts like 30-40 seconds. It's a waste of money. Just get these and uh, you're going to be good to go. So now you hit level 5. The spells you want to look at, and I want to show you here, are Blast of Cold and Frost Bolt. And look at the difference. They're kind of pretty close, right? But actually, what is really good is Frostbolt has a one second cast time, meaning you can cast this while somebody's beating on you. 
You can cast it between their swings, which is very, very easy to do. So keep in mind of little details like that. Also, keep in mind how much mana you have. You have 151 maximum, and Firebolt there uses 28. So in other words, you could fire off about five Firebolts if they don't fizzle. So five of them, and just say the minimum damage is about 50 you're going to be about able to do about 250 damage. So just know what your capabilities of damage are, your potential. Um, and also look at the lower one, fire, Shock of Fire. It has a 1.5 casting time, less likely to get interrupted. So these are factors you got to keep in mind when playing the wizard. You need to know how much mana I have, how much potential damage can I put out. Also, you need to know some monsters are more resistant to fire than others. And you'll find that out through trial and error. And then you have to calculate in your head, what can I do and what can I use? Because all you can do is root and shoot at some point. You can't fear them or you can't slow them or anything. So you have to know these. It comes down to numbers a lot of times with the wizard. Now later on, since your defense and offense are weak, what I like to do is initiate combat with melee combat. And I like to combat like stuff that's blue and lower to me like this fire beetle at level five we're at a point where the part of the zone we're in is a little bit too low so what i do is go up and initiate hand-to-hand -hand combat or knife to fire beetle combat just regular melee combat and uh, do this as long as they can't really hurt you much you see how our health bar isn't really going down look at that we're getting a raise on defense and with 142 intelligence, your uh, skills will go up very, very fast. There you go, number 12. You've got 12 on defense. And each time you go up, you're going to slowly start bringing that armor class up. And that's very, very crucial. Every point counts. You want to get that armor class up. Look at piercing. It was less than five. It's a miracle we even hit anything, huh? So now when he goes, don't root him. Don't chase him. Just nuke him like that. This way you get, see, your channeling goes up. Look what happened earlier. My offense went up. My piercing went up. And these are all great things because as your piercing goes up, your attack will go up. Look at my attack at six. Now, attack is only for melee attack. It doesn't help your spells at all. But just open like this with some nice good old kitchen knife fighting. And there he goes. And when he gets low enough, know how low he goes before he runs. He ran a little bit below 50%. So when you get him a little bit low, get ready to fire that spell. And as soon as he turns his back, bam, fire off and smoke him right there. Get Become efficient at it and get it down. Here's a decayed skeleton. Now one thing that's nice about this zone for a newbie, new player, is a lot of the kobolds aren't really that aggro so if you're sitting down somewhere and they're kind of close to you they're not going to aggro of course if he runs right over your face he may aggro on you but it's not too bad at all and it's a great place to level and as a wizard you can just sit there and fire stuff off there's going to be many situations where you're going to be out here and somebody's going to be dying and you're going to be like hey you need help and they're not going to say anything and they're just going to want to fight to the death and they leave uh, a mob half dead. Well, they die and they leave a mob half dead. Well, you know what? Pop out that nuke and kill them. That's, point, that's more experience for you. That there is a veil. Sometimes you get lucky. If you're here long enough, you may get a whole set of cloth armor, which may not seem like a lot, but is. And look at our ACs back up to 17. At a maximum of 37. Like, who has 37 AC this early in the game? That's a caster. You know, see, there's why I don't like to open with a nuke. Okay, you open with a nuke and you just and you spank him that hard. This guy is going to run and we wanted him to help our defense. So if you're going to hit him with a nuke, hit him with a really, really low nuke that only does so little damage. Make him mad and he'll come right at you. That's what you want to do. And as usual, he just carries nothing but junk. Wait for his other friend to go away. They may be social. And take them on. Just choppity chop chop. And when he gets below 50%, we will just put our finger over the nuke button. Well, actually, he chickened out early. We should have done this. Because you see right there, we got a fizzle. That will happen. And you have no way to snare them. No way at all. So we're doing fine. And, uh, you know, I mean, look at this. The wizard could be a 
full-time killing machine. Do not attack the skunk. He casts a debuff on you. He's not worth the trouble. This guy here. And there he goes, right below 50%. I mean, are these guys sissies or what? Whoever thought of running at 50%? I mean, only I do that when I'm a noob, but yeah, look at that. He just runs. So you you know, you got him. You, you're ready for him. Just get that finger right over the button and bam. And you're going to get a lot of these runs. They're still good to you. It's a lot of times these guys will only give you about 1% on the kill. But don't look at it that way. Look at it like if you let them beat on you long enough, maybe about take down a quarter of your life or whatever, even a third, you're going to, uh, that, that's really what you want to do. You want to let them do that, and then you can just uh, watch your mana. Okay. So we're going to look around, and now it's time to go south below the bridge. Because if we go over the bridge and go south, we're going to find tougher mobs and we need to get something tougher because these guys are kind of going to be light blue and they're not going to give much experience but yet we don't want to go to the tiger island on the left of the map that's a dangerous area boy i just love the graphics the spell effects are just crazy good really nice so it's off to the bridge and we're on our way on the other side we'll find things like snakes and um Big spiders, things like that. And here we go. Let's hit him with root. See, he resists. You have to be careful when you use root. And he resisted again, it appears. Hold him, root him, back him. Now you see right there, blue, a lot of mana, a lot. And what do you know? Firebolt hits him. So... When you're ready, move uh, south of the bridge and just keep employing Root and Nuke. And if they're really weak, open with melee and then use a finishing shot of your low-level Nuke. You'll get it down. That's what you want to do. Level 7 is a good level as a wizard because uh, you're right before Shock of Ice and later on you're, below, you're right below Shock of Ice and below Shock of Lightning. These are really good spells. Firestorm, not so great, but oh, just buy it anyway. It's Nowadays things are getting cheaper. But um, yeah, take a look at Shock of Ice. 46 to 58 for a cost of, I believe this one, the cost is something like... 28 mana or something like that but it's good to know you'll get to see so once we get to that level we really have some nice tools to fight with so that's what you want to do make sure you get all your spells every i mean the ones that do count the other ones you can skip it like true north and all that. some people like to fill up the whole spell book with everything but i always find it a waste of time i just get what's needed and get out there it makes life so much more confusing also, in terms of rearranging your book, you may want to put all the ice in one page, put all the fire in one page, because later on when you got to go look for those, it's really going to help that you know, okay, this is the ice page, this is a fire page, etc., etc. So, that's all. Okay, so... What you want to do now, when you get a little bit south here, is the ones that give more experience are ones like a large fire beetle. But keep in mind, he can resist. And for the cost of firing off that root, you could have probably nuked him with something else. But you got to try anyway. So you can see he hits much, 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 much harder. And now, in this case, if you can, it is important to root this guy. So this is called root and escape so you root and back up out of his combat radius I didn't go far enough and then you hit him and then you root again and you back up this is how it's played and hopefully he's gonna die soon defense 18 that's really good see he interrupts you by stunning you very difficult that's why I like that the one that fires off fast okay there you go defense 19 offense 31 
and it's still going up and we got experience too almost ready to go level 10 at level 10 i would suggest you get out of here maybe go to kinos and then blackboro places like that because right now this place is kind of dying out you do have the karens over on the left hand side of the uh, screen you cannot see them on the map they are probably about level 12 13 they are tough and there's a lot of them but you can if you can get a group over there you can you can level there but there are advantages if you can get back to Kinos. There's more uh, economy going on there. A lot of things like that. And of course, Blackboro. Okay, so we're level 10. I want to show you something. I want to show you what happens when you get Shock of Lightning. Okay, let's uh, root him. Shock of Lightning only hits for two. And why? Sometimes you get a new spell. They fizzle. Or some the, for some weird reason, the resist and how they're affected on each monster is different. So right here you can see with our other stuff, Fire Bolt, we hit for full. And then finally Shock of Lightning we do hit. But you got to realize when you use some bigger spell like Shock of Lightning, when you just get it, there is a risk to it. Like you can use it and then the thing is, is you may resist or you may get fizzled or whatever. But if you use a spell that's one or two levels below you, they can do less damage you're more insured of it uh, doing something. So keep that in mind. It's not always about using the latest spell you just got, you know, but you have to look at it this way. The later spells are generally more mana efficient. And it's not by that much, but the thing is, is it's, it's enough that over the long roll, long, long haul, they all do make a difference. Now I like everybody just sits here and lets you walk by them and stuff they don't even care i really like that that's one nice thing about this zone you won't find that everywhere you go to kinos you just can't sit in the middle anywhere something's going to kill you but over here you can just sit so there are advantages but like i mentioned earlier at level 10 or earlier you want to get out of this place in the old days this was kind of erudin was a ghost town compared to the rest of the world you want to get out there and group with those other people sure you can stay here and group and all that but Go out and see the world. Try to go to Kinos first, and then probably by the time you're doing this, there'll be druids out there that'll be teleporting you all the way across the continent. Okay, guys, I hope you like this video, and I hope this helps any of you that want to play wizards. Let me just say, it's a tough road for wizards, but they do get to have fun by nuking stuff. So hope you liked it, and uh, thank you for watching.